Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome to today's live. I am excited to talk to you more about personal branding and tying that to leadership. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about how do you leverage your brand on social media. And so um, Dan Schwabel has a fantastic quote that says, proficiency in social media is a differentiator now but soon it will be a qualifier. And Dan said that a while ago, I actually don't have the exact date, but it's been a couple of years. And um, one reason why I love that quote is because, um, you know, it's interesting how social media is this thing, right? Where people are very much saying like, oh, I gotta be on social media. I need to be on Instagram. I need to be on Facebook. I gotta be on LinkedIn. Um, oh, how do I navigate TikTok, right? Like there's all the different things, right? And so, um, so then there's this element of how do you get proficient, right? And so my thought is, is like, do you really need to be quote unquote proficient? Like, do you need to be a pro on social media? if that's not really what you're needing to do for your career. So if you're in marketing, if you are in PR, if you are in any of those kind of positions where it's focused on the, on influencing from like a, like a, like a marketing and sales, then yeah, sure. You probably really need to know and become very proficient on social media um, to help you to literally do your job. Right. But the other part of it is, is what is your proficiency for you that makes sense for what you're doing, especially if you're a technology leader, right? There's an element of how do you um, how do you leverage it in a way that it can actually help you, and it doesn't become a distraction. And so, um, I do think that social media is important. I do think that um, there are a lot of people who are who are posting on social media without thinking about the ramifications. And that's more of what I want to talk about today. So I really want you to slow down. I want you to be thoughtful about what, what you're posting online because your reputation, your personal brand is at stake, right? Like this is, this is a thing. This is absolutely um, a concern. And, um, and because people are going to check, right? Like the last statistic I wrote, something like 97% of recruiters look at your LinkedIn profile to qualify you, right? And then if that, the LinkedIn profile, if it doesn't really represent you in a good way, that could have a negative um, impact on you, right? Like regardless of what's on your paper resume, regardless of what you put on that um, applicant tracking system where you applied online, when you applied to a position, they're still looking at what are you putting out there on LinkedIn because that's what you're showing to everybody, not just what you're putting on an actual application for something or, or one particular resume to one particular company. And so, um, so it will qualify you right back to what Dan said in that quote. Again, that quote is proficiency in social media is a differentiator, but soon it will be a qualifier, right? So get proficient enough so that you can make sure that you're qualifying yourself. So let me share with you a few things that I think are gonna help you to become per, um, more proficient on social media. So um, just to make sure that we understand what like social media we're talking about. So the definition of so social media out there on the interwebs is, is this websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. And so I've always looked at social media um, as a way to communicate and connect with other people. Um, just like back in the day, you can imagine, you know, our great grandparents or something before they had telephones, they might have been like, whoa, <laughs> what is this phone thing? Why would I need that? Why wouldn't I just mail a letter, right? Or why wouldn't I just walk out of my house and go to my neighbor across the street and talk to them? Why would I need to pick up the phone? Any of us today would say, what? You actually want me to mail something? I haven't owned stamps in 20 years, right? Or, or a year was the last time I actually mailed something or leave my house go across the street and talk to my neighbor face to face. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Right. And so, um, so that's 
what's an interesting is that we've evolved as a society over time. We're using different tools to help us with communicating with different people. And so today, a way to help us with that is communicating on the different platforms and applications like LinkedIn, like Facebook, like Instagram, Twitter, etc. Right. And so um, if you're thinking, OK, well, how like like what what do I do around this? Like where do I where do I put my um, my energy? Um, I want to start off with something I'm always talking about, which is personal brand and your personal brand. Again, that's your mark you want to make on the world, right? That's that that mark that you put on things, that stamp that you're putting on everything, and that stamp is you. Okay, and so just thinking. I'm going to make an assumption here that you're clear on what your personal brand is. Okay. So if you're clear on your personal brand, then you can start leveraging social media to help you in perpetuating your brand. Okay. So if you're not clear on your brand, get clear on that first and then come back to this stuff I'm going to talk about here. And so you want to consider like, what are the different social media accounts that you want to consider um, to put your time and energy on? And you really want to be careful because, um, when you're posting on different social media outlets, um, you know, like for example, I've had some people say like, oh, I'll post things on Facebook that are related to my personal life. Um, and that's me, that's me outside of work. So I'm allowed to post on there whatever I want. Not so my friend. I would encourage you to be careful about that because um, again, recruiters, managers and whatnot, they're checking you out. Okay. They're going to look at you in different places. And it's really easy to figure those out and just do a quick Google search and people's names will come up. And so, um, so even though you might say, that's okay, I got it all locked down. It's all private. No, but okay. But are you sure? <laughs> so um, just think about that. Like be careful about what you're putting on Facebook thinking, Oh, that will never make a, um, any kind of a negative contribution or impact on what I'm doing at work. Um, I know of a story where a company was looking to hire um, somebody to go do training. And this person was going to be traveling all over the United States um, and be performing these trainings um, at different company sites and whatnot. And so they were going to be staying in hotels, eating at restaurants. Um, you know, they had a company credit card to book the, um, the hotel, the airfare, the, the rental car, etc. And then they would go and they would do trainings and then they would, then they would come back to you know, where, wherever their home base is. And um, they decided, well, let's do a, um, let's, let's do a, a search on this person. So they started looking this person up. And when they looked at them on Facebook, they saw like all these pictures of this person partying and drunk at bars and whatnot. And they said, yeah, that's concerning because they're showing all of this stuff. Now they don't know what day it was or who all those people were. They, like, for example, they don't know if it was a work day, but just the fact that that person was putting that out there just showed a different level of professionalism that they decided to not extend an offer to that person. And so when you hear about these kind of situations, then you, I know some people are like, well, that's totally uncool. Like if it's their personal time, if it's after hours, they should be allowed to do whatever they want. <clears throat> I understand. I'm just simply saying you don't know how the people are going to perceive that. So be careful about what you're posting on social media, right? Or if your buddies tag you on something and you're like, whoa, hold on a second. Like you can untag yourself, right? And so I'm just simply saying you can't control people's perceptions. You can control what you post on social media. So just think about that as you're considering where you're going to post and what you're going to post. Um, I really think you should probably choose one or two different social media accounts that you really want to spend a majority of your time on. Um, Cause I have a lot of people who've said like, well, which, you know, where should I be? There's TikTok and there's YouTube and should I start a blog? Should I do a podcast? Should I be on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, like all the things. Okay. And so I always think just pick two that you really feel like you can consistently spend some time on. And so um, I've noticed a lot of people in the tech sector really focusing on, um, on LinkedIn and Twitter. Those are the two that they spend a lot of time on as far as purposefully trying to engage with people and using again as that platform to connect, right? This versus the going to a networking event, going to a conference, 
the the so so to speak of walking across the street and talking to your neighbor right so the neighbor in this situation being that other person in technology so um, but again, choose the ones that you really that you really want to be a part of. And just because that's where a bunch of people are at, if you don't really want to engage and be there, then you're not going to enjoy it. It's not going it's not going to make sense for you to try to push yourself um, if you don't really really want to use that tool. I would say out of all of them, LinkedIn is for sure the best one to spend from a uh, spend your time on. Excuse me, from a perspective of um, dealing with corporate career related things. I think LinkedIn is, is truly the best. And I've, I've been encouraging people to get on there. I mean, I got on LinkedIn back in, um, back in 2004, I remember thinking, wow, this is a really cool tool. I, I'm definitely going to get on this. And then I remember telling people about it. And a lot of people, even at that point, they didn't even have like a Facebook account. And so, um, so anyhow, I think that you have, like regardless of when the social media starts, regardless of how many people are on it, you still for yourself need to think, okay, does this make sense? Do I do I like what this platform is about? So give yourself that chance to make a decision and then pick one or two and then just stick with it and have that consistency of, um, of effort. Like, so for example, on LinkedIn, writing LinkedIn articles. So if you write like one article and then you don't write anything again for seven months, there's no consistency, right? So if you're going to write articles, great. And do it on a regular basis and make sure that that stuff you're talking about ties back to ta-da, your personal brand, right? Okay. And so, um, and then always think about the conversations that are happening from what I mean by conversation is somebody posts something, and then there's the comments, right? And then there's conversation back and forth. So be thoughtful about your responses. Be thoughtful about whatever you're posting, right? Um, but make meaningful responses, right? Don't just do the, hey, thumbs up um, or congrats or, hey, that sounds great, right? Like, well, why? What what sounds great about it? What would you add to that? So I let, sometimes I like to think about, like, if I'm face to face with somebody and somebody told me um, I got a promotion at my job, would I just give them be like, hey, I'm going to give them a thumbs up. No, <laughs> I'll probably say something to them, right? Like, it's awesome. How did that happen? What are you looking forward to? Like, that's meaningful, right? That's adding to the conversation. So think of that for yourself too. Like, what can you do to add to the conversation in a way that's natural to you? I'm very inquisitive, right? Like, I like to ask the questions. Tell me more about that. How did that happen? Um, you know, what are you worried about? What are you excited about? You know, just things like that. Like, I that's who I am very much in person. So I try to be that person on social media. So the same thing, do that for yourself too. Think about how is it that you want to be interacting with them in a meaningful way? Again, that ties back to your personal brand. And then um, I also think that... Your company may have some kind of social media um, rules and guidelines that they want you to follow. And so um, so take a look at those just to make sure that you're in sync with that. And then um, and then leverage the tool to help you on behalf of the company. Right? Like I've seen people post, hey, you were hiring a product manager or, hey, we're um, we're going to be doing this open house at our office or something like that. Like, that's awesome. Like, why wouldn't you leverage it? Right. Um, but if you're like never on social media and all of a sudden the company is saying, hey, we need you to help with recruiting, that's going to feel a little bit weird if all of a sudden you just start posting a bunch of things that, hey, we need a software developer. We need a project manager. We need a QA tester. We need an analyst. You know what? It's like, ugh. like all of a sudden it feels that very, a very spammy feel to it. And so it's better to have the conversations and be participating. And then also along the way to let people in your network know that, Hey, we're looking for a developer or whatever. So the, or, you know, whatever the position is. So just think of it that way. Like think of like what would be the natural way, um, that you would be communicating about and then check with the company on their guidelines. Like what, what are some things that they're wanting you to do, but know that it's your LinkedIn account, right? So they can give you guidelines and direction if it's something that you're posting on their behalf, but if it's for you and on yours, then, you know, you may or may not have um, specific direction from them on what they are wanting you to post. So it doesn't hurt to take a look and find out. You might check with like your communications department or HR or something. I don't know. Every company is different on who handles that, but it might just be a good idea so that that way you're not doing anything um, accidentally that could, that could be harmful to your relationship at your current company. Right. And then, um, 
And then the last thing that I want you to think about is that there are a lot of people who are on social media. In fact, I did some research on the statistics and on Facebook alone, there's 2.85 billion, that's billion with a B, monthly active users on Facebook, okay? That's a lot. Instagram has about 1 billion, again, that's with a B. Whereas if we looked at LinkedIn, they're at about 720 million regular users, okay? So, so when you're thinking about like your reach and whatnot, you might think, oh, well, if there's almost 3 billion people on Facebook, that's where I wanna spend my time. Well, sure, if, that, if that's what makes sense, right? If that's where, um, where the people are that you feel like you need to connect with, okay? But even though there's that many people, it doesn't mean like also just because you're on there, you're connected to all those people immediately either, right? So you want to just think about, okay, well, there's a lot that's going on in these groups, but if the bigger picture here is it just goes to show how many people in the world are really using social media. So look at this as a way to help you to leverage who you are as a leader and to promote your personal brand. Um, but when you're on those different platforms, just think about how you're adding your voice to all those other voices, right? Like what is it that you really wanna be clear on so that you can stand out in that sea of all of this stuff that's going on. So as we're wrapping up this conversation today about personal brand and leadership and leveraging um, social media to help you with your personal brand, my question for you, and add this into the comments, um, if you will, which is who is a leader that you like to follow on social media? Maybe there's somebody that um, really has made a difference for you, maybe like a guru of some sort. Make a comment below and and uh, let's jump into the conversation about that and why, why is it that you like to follow that person? Thank you so much for joining me on this LinkedIn Live today. I look forward to talking with you soon. And remember, my friends, as you're going through all of this, that you really can become the technology leader that other people want to work for. Thanks so much, and I'll see you.